Let's make chicken tikka biryani. Because this is chicken tikka biryani, it is typically made with boneless chicken, but you can choose to use bone-in if you prefer. Start with our marinade, whisk together some yogurt, chili powder, kasuri methi, garam masala, salt, ginger, garlic, and some grated beet for color. You can also use red food coloring if you prefer, but I love the red color that beets give me without adding any food coloring to my food. Then add in your chicken cubes and mix well to make sure that all of the chicken cubes are well coated in the marinade. And let that marinate for anywhere from 30 minutes to 12 hours in the refrigerator. Now let's make the tikka masala. Heat some oil in a pan, add in your bay leaves, a cinnamon stick, green cardamom pods, and some cloves. Then add in your garlic and your ginger and give that a nice mix and let cook for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then add in your tomato sauce and mix well. We're going to let that cook until the oil separates and rises to the top. So you're looking for puddles of oil on the surface of the tomato sauce. Then we're going to add in our whisked yogurt garam masala, chili powder, turmeric, and the grated beets. And give that a nice mix and cook until the oil rises to the top again. Then we're going to add in our fried onions. I'm using store-bought fried onions and I like to just crush them with my hands as I'm adding them in. You can Fry your own onions beforehand if you prefer for a more authentic taste. I find these work really well and save me a lot of time. Uh, then add in about a half cup of water and give it a nice mix. Then add in some kasuri methi. And stir well. We want to keep the gravy pretty thick so that we um, don't end up with a watery biryani. Now let's prepare our marinated chicken. I like to use the skewers, but these are completely optional. Preheat your broiler for about 10 minutes and grease your baking tray. I like to um, line it with foil as well. Add in your chicken and put it in the broiler for about five to six minutes. And once that is cooked, you can transfer the chicken directly into the sauce. and mix well. Okay, now we're going to make the rice. Bring four cups of water to a rolling boil. Transfer your soaked rice to the water. Add in cardamom pods, salt, and ghee to the pot. And give that a nice stir and immediately set a timer for seven minutes. You can test the rice by picking up a grain. The edges should squish into mush, but the center should have a little bit of bite and break into half rather than turning fully mushy. Immediately drain the rice in a large strainer and spread out onto a plate to avoid clumping. Now for assembling the biryani. Any heavy bottomed pot with a lid is ideal for this. I like to use my Dutch oven or my always pan. Add about a teaspoon of ghee to the bottom of your pot with a tablespoon of water and swirl that around with a spoon and spread it evenly across the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to transfer about half the rice to the pot.
spread that around evenly. Then layer on the chicken tikka masala over the rice. Sprinkle on about half of the fried onions. Half of the mint leaves. Then layer on the remaining rice. And then drizzle on your saffron water. Place some dollops of key all around the top. And add the remaining fried onions. And the mint leaves. Now tightly cover that in foil to ensure that our biryani steams nicely. Add the lid. Let that cook. If you're using an electric stove, cook on medium for 20 minutes. If you're using a gas stove, cook on high for two minutes and then lower the heat to medium for 15 minutes. There you have it, chicken tikka biryani with perfectly